Hello! Thanks for being in a new video. This time I have with me the Honor Magic 6 Pro and we are going to do the full review. Let's get started. This device is the top of the range of Honor, so it will offer the most advanced of this manufacturer and therefore its price is high. In Mexico it has been announced at 28,999 pesos. That is approximately $1,710. Although remember that the prices here are not the same as over there. The exchange rate can vary a lot and in Mexico the prices are generally quite high. However, they include the HonorPad X9 as a gift, which is an entry-level tablet, screen insurance for 12 months, and extended warranty for one year. So we have some interesting add-ons that might come in handy for some people. Obviously, at this price point, it gets to compete with the top of the industry, so we're going to get pretty picky with it. Fortunately, it has good distribution, so it will be easy to find either in online stores or phone companies. So having said all that, let's start with the design. Let's start describing it from the front, where we find something very premium, definitely super slim bezels both top and bottom and also on the sides. And at the top center we see a pill-shaped cutout that's quite reminiscent of the iPhone, but as you notice it will integrate curved screens so it's a device that looks extremely premium and despite having curved screen it's actually not fragile at all, as it incorporates Honor's Nano Crystal Shield which is extremely drop resistant. So you don't have to worry too much, it's a very rugged device because it also has IP68 as its water resistance level. So if it does get dropped in the water it's going to have a high chance of surviving. Just remember that this level of resistance degrades over time and to get this level of resistance it is tested with pure water. So if you are going to submerge it in seawater or pool water, it is recommended to do it for a short time in shallow water and then rinse it very well with pure water. But the truth of the matter is that we are in front of a device that is not only very beautiful but also very resistant. Remember that the screen has 5 star certification by the SGS of Switzerland with the drop resistance test, so it is very tough. On the right side we find power button and volume buttons in a gold metal frame. On the top is a microphone, also the infrared to function as a universal remote control and the secondary audio output. The left side is completely clean and has a thickness of 8.9 millimeters, while on the bottom we are going to find the slot to place a nano SIM card. In this case I have a unit with two slots, but remember that if you buy it with a phone company it is likely that the second tray is blocked. So this is a fact that you should consult specifically where you are going to acquire it. Then we find a microphone, the USB-C port and finally the main speaker. The device has two versions, this one that I have in my hands has a synthetic leather back cover so it has a weight of 225 grams. There is another version that has glass cover which is slightly heavier so there may be variations there. In this case I have the vintage green color, which is extremely nice because it also has some level of texture on this back cover, so it's one of the nicest looking devices you're going to find. Consider also that the ring around the camera has a little bit more elongated corners that end up giving a super nice design from my point of view added to the gold and green color scheme which is very nice. So with these I can say that this is one of the devices that I like the most aesthetically. We will also find this back cover with curves on the edges for a very comfortable grip so it's a comfortable nice and sturdy device. The screen is 6.8 inches with a resolution of 1280 by 2800 pixels, slightly higher than full HD+. So it's a little bit difficult to categorize it but we can conclude that it's a little bit higher because it reaches 453 pixels per inch overall with this diagonal. So it's a very attractive display, there's no doubt about that. It has excellent quality, it's a panel with OLED technology so it's going to offer us very intense colors, contrast also very very high and also also very good viewing angles, so from either side you're still going to have a good display in terms of brightness, color and contrast. Also it has LTPO technology, so when you're watching static content the display lowers its refresh rate to only 1Hz, so it updates its content every second, so it consumes very little battery. 
And on the contrary, when you're playing some content, playing games or scrolling, on the screen it's going up to 120 hertz. So it updates your content 120 times in one second and that makes the movements look super fluid and super smooth. In addition, it supports HDR content. That means that some areas of the screen will emit much more brightness to give a super extreme level of realism when viewing your favorite movies or content. In fact, if you notice, Right now the video player has a little bit more brightness because it's an HDR video and the rest of the screen has less brightness. In fact, when you are playing some HDR content, some areas of the screen can reach a peak of 5000 nits to give extreme realism when viewing this content. The overall peak brightness of the display is 1600 nits, so it's also a very bright panel that's going to give you very good outdoor viewing. And with respect to the minimum brightness, it also comes down significantly, although in this case that is daytime, I still manage to perceive a little of its content, so possibly in the evenings it will come to fall slightly short of the lowest brightness. And as you realize, in the accessibility options, there is no way to further reduce the brightness. Like many devices, it will offer us a visual rest mode, as well as an automatic adjustment little by little depending on the time of day so that the filter will adapt and you will have a quite comfortable visualization. In fact, speaking of which, it is a screen that offers us a dimming rate of 4320 Hz. That means that the flicker is practically minimal. So, it's going to be a very comfortable viewing, even though it's something that's practically imperceptible to the eye, but it ends up fatiguing your eyes if you have a very slow dimming rate. It also has an ebook mode that will put everything in grayscale for comfortable reading, and it will also offer us the natural tone mode on the screen to adapt to the white of the environment. That is, if there is a slightly warmer white tone in the environment, the screen will also become a little more yellow, and if the ambient white is cooler, the screen will also turn to slightly bluer colors, giving a very pleasant experience. And even notice how it has two color calibration modes, one natural and one vivid. And you can also very specifically select how you want the colors to be displayed on your screen. So it gives us some nice adjustment mechanisms to get everything exactly the way we want it. The resolution of the screen can be adapted intelligently to not consume so much battery as well as the refresh rate that I mentioned a moment ago. So it's a very good and very smart screen. And it also has some video enhancers as happens in some TVs so that through artificial intelligence optimizations can give more saturation in the colors of certain content. And there are several applications compatible with this type of effects. In conclusion, it is a screen of excellent quality. The audio is stereo because it offers us a speaker at the bottom and another speaker at the top that has two audio outputs, one in the frame and another in the headphone area for calls. So it is going to offer us an immersive sound experience that is also of excellent quality. It is definitely a very balanced sound with a good presence of bass frequencies, well-defined treble and mids that do not get to annoy. So believe me, it is a very good quality sound. Possibly not so loud or so outrageous, but even at the maximum level is a sound that maintains a very good quality without getting to notice any distortion. Let's listen to a small test, but remember that it is not the same as listening to it live. Fortunately, the device has an excellent sound quality, with bass frequencies very present. And I mention this because it doesn't really have an equalizer for the speakers, so there's no way to modify the type of sound these speakers project. Although, as I tell you, fortunately, it is of very good quality. But if you want to access sound effects, it is necessary to use headphones that you will have to use through the USB-C port, since it does not integrate headphone jack. So when you have headphones connected, you can access DTSX Ultra sound effects to have a kind of surround sound. You can also select spatial audio so you can feel the audio traveling from different directions. So you have those two options or you can turn it off completely. And in the sound style section, you can access to completely customize your stereo sound experience. It has a quick sound enhancement for treble, vocal and bass. Or you can also access a 10 band equalizer. 
So all these options are very attractive, but it would be much better to let us use them even when you don't have headphones connected. But for the speakers, there is no audio customization whatsoever. So the sound software still seems to have a significant range of improvement to integrate more options focused on this feature. But even though it has no headphone jack, if you want to use wireless headphones, there is a good news. Since this device supports the LDSC codec that offers a very high resolution wireless audio, as long as you have compatible headphones, or it will also offer the aptX codec, which is a bit more common and also offers good audio resolution. Plus obviously the SBC and AAC codecs, which are more common. So even the audio experience through wireless headphones is going to be a very good quality. The device integrates three microphones Phones, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the camera module area. So it gives us a very good audio pickup, at least in theory. But next we're going to listen to a test. Esta es una prueba de audio grabada con los micrófonos integrados del Honor Magic 6 Pro. I think they are very good quality microphones to pick up the voice and then you will see a video recorded with this device to see the behavior of the microphones in a very high volume environment by setting the sound system in my house at maximum volume. I think that in that kind of conditions it also picks up the audio well, there is a very slight distortion but honestly it is not serious so it can also be a very good tool for recording at concerts. And since it has three microphones it also has noise cancellation when recording your videos, although it is an optional feature so you can decide whether you want to turn it on or off. The front camera has a very high resolution sensor, specifically we are talking about 50 megapixels, the lens has f2.0 point aperture and it has autofocus. So it has very good specs and it has something that could be considered by some as a second camera, although it's not specifically a camera, it's a 3D depth sensor for advanced facial recognition detection. That's why it has a wide crop. As you can see, the camera gives us two levels of width, so it's a camera with plenty of room. In this case, the quick release method has to be two taps on the volume down button. But as you realize, the screen must be locked, because if you're inside any other app and you want to quickly access the camera, this gesture is not going to work, nor two taps anywhere, so I'd like a faster method of opening the camera, but oh well. Remember that whenever you switch to the front camera, the device is going to enter portrait mode. Something I personally dislike because I think it's more common to take normal pictures of you than portraits. Remember that portraits blur the background, so it can get a bit annoying. Maybe some of your pictures will come out with a weird effect because you don't realize that it enters portrait mode instead of traditional photo mode. Although if you want more options, you do have to enter portrait mode where you can enable or disable blur and you also have beauty mode available with three different settings. Unify tone, sharpen and finally change the specific skin tone. Fortunately, the photo capture is too agile and fast. It's a super smooth experience. If you hold down the shutter, you won't get a burst, but I think just by pressing the shutter many times, you could get some nice looking results. Fortunately, it also integrates palm capture for those moments when it's a bit awkward to press the shutter. It also has other smart capture tools like smile capture or even auto capture that could help you capture the exact moment at the time of a jump or on pets. Here, he specifically explains the scenarios where he gets the best performance. It also has a floating shutter option so that you can place the shutter where you want it to be more comfortable to take pictures. At the top there is a button so you can adjust any color filter you want to apply on your photos. They are quite subtle filters that practically only slightly change the interpretation of color so it is much appreciated. This front camera gives good quality pictures although honestly I expected a little more considering the price we are talking about. It is a camera that above all will be characterized by being very wide but I feel that it does not have as much color accuracy nor a level of detail as high as I would like. Although the fact that it has such a wide lens and autofocus makes group shots a lot easier. That's why I say that the width can be one of its strongest points. If you usually enjoy this type of photography, you will enjoy this device a lot too. In interiors, I also noticed that the colors are not quite accurate. And again, even though it is a clean photograph, I feel that the level of detail can fall slightly short. 
Especially in this case, trying to eliminate noise probably also eliminates some details, for example, of the beard and some other areas. So it's not a bad photograph, but I think it's still not a camera I would consider worthy of a device of this price. In backlit conditions, something very curious happened because the preview as usual looks quite overexposed and burnt. But notice how the result is also completely overexposed and burnt, so we did multiple tests and constantly got this same result. Concluding that the behavior was quite strange. Later we realized that this happens when the device is very hot, so after letting it cool down, it finally managed to take a good picture balancing lights and shadows well. So I insist that it's going to depend a lot on the temperature of the device to know if you're going to get a good picture or not, which is very curious and I haven't seen this happen on other devices with the exception of the portrait effect. And speaking of the portrait effect is another feature that is not going to be available if the device is too hot. However, the device does not notify you at any time that this effect is not available. So you have to check your photo to know if it applied the effect or not. For example, here we tried again to take a portrait picture but the device was too hot so it didn't perform. Possibly with an update they can fix this because we had to wait for the device to cool down so we could finally take a portrait picture and we confirmed that it is anyway not able to keep the foreground objects in focus but only the bodies and people. So it's not that advanced portrait photography again compared to what we could find on other premium range devices. At night I quite like the result. Interestingly I find that at night it has a better balance of lights and even better color management as well. Although again, the level of detail can get to feel a little weird due to the noise reduction algorithm that could get to implement. But even portrait photography at night seems to me to be of good quality. In this case, it confirms that if you don't have any object around you or next to you, it's going to have a much more natural result. And in this kind of backlit night photography, which is a very complicated environment, it definitely does a spectacular job. Remember that this photography is super complex, but this device has solved it in a good way. Obviously, there are some areas that seem to look a little weird with a lot of artifacts because of how complicated the photography is, but I think the environment is very challenging and the result, if it has been good enough to highlight it as a plus point. In fact, if you turn on the screen as a flash simulation, you might get a little more backlighting. Although it's a bit cool lighting, so if you're in a warm light environment, it could come across as a weirdly toned photograph. But if you can help this supplemental lighting. On the back, we will find three cameras. Let's start with the 13mm one that has a 50 megapixel sensor, f2.0 point aperture and autofocus. It's an ultra wide camera, so it has very good specs, considering we're not talking about the lens that many consider to be the main lens. Speaking of that one, it's on this part and it's 27 millimeters. It gives us a 50 megapixel sensor with a variable aperture from f1.4 to f2.0. So variable aperture technology is not that common to find in smartphones, although in this case the range is not that wide. However, I think you can perceive the change between one aperture and another in case you want to use the manual mode. This camera also offers autofocus and optical stabilization. And finally, the third camera offers 68mm on the lens, that is about 2.5x optical zoom. It offers us a sensor of 180 megapixels, having a rather strange strategy compared to other manufacturers, because in this case, we do not see too much optical zoom, but too much resolution on the sensor. But not having so much optical zoom does benefit the aperture, because it's f2.6, so it's going to offer us a good entry of light in this part. So it should take good zoom pictures at night. In addition, it also offers us autofocus and optical stabilization. And applying a crop on the sensor gives us a kind of virtual lens of 135 millimeters, i.e. optical zoom approximate 5x. Although it is not specifically optical zoom, but maintains optical quality by making a cut in the sensor. So the photographs are 12.5 megapixels and maintain the same characteristics of this lens. It also has laser autofocus assist over here. So it really is an interesting photographic system. Next, we're going to do a test by trying to capture number three with several attempts. Note that the screen has a bit of a significant delay from real life. So my first two attempts are looking at real life and my second attempt will be looking at the screen viewer. And note that in my first two attempts, the capture was pretty much at the exact moment. It was too much precision. So the ideal way to capture the exact moment is to look at real life and not the cell phone viewfinder. 
Since the cell phone viewfinder generates a small delay, although honestly it is not so high. So it is very good in capture speed, in fact in this part it offers us the automatic capture that as I told you works well for jumps and some other activities. Although personally I like more to shoot very accurately and not rely so much on the automatic mode but there it is available. And it's actually very curious because at the bottom you can also activate that automatic capture. So it's strange to have two buttons to activate the same option. And when auto capture is on, you could also activate a bokeh effect to generate a blur also in conjunction with this auto capture. Or you have a beauty mode available when you are using this auto capture mode. At the top you also have the artificial intelligence button that you decide whether or not you want to use it. And we also have a button to change the color rendition in case you want a natural, vibrant or finally authentic rendition. So it has three methods of color rendition for you to choose the one you like the most. By default it comes natural and that's the preset we used for all the test shots we took. But in addition to changing the color rendition you could also apply some filter specifically. In fact the device can learn your usage habits to recommend some filters in different scenarios. Again these are subtle color filters, they are not too exaggerated but we see a larger amount of numbers compared to what we were seeing on the front camera. It also offers us other additional tools such as the level, the grid or the timer quickly accessible only by swiping from the bottom up. By the way I was also forgetting to test the burst which as you will notice takes quite a long time to start and gives us a limit of 100 pictures. It took practically a second to start although after it takes a second to start it does capture pictures very quickly to capture the precise moment. But the fact that it takes so long to start leaves me with an uncomfortable feeling. In auto mode you can click on the screen to adjust the focus or exposure but obviously you can access the professional mode to have many more parameters such as the type of metering, the ISO which can go up to 6400, also the aperture which as I tell you you can vary between f1.4 and f2.0. Remember that this is not a simulated aperture but completely physical and it is something unusual in smartphones. We are also going to find the shutter speed that can go up to a maximum of 30 seconds of exposure. There is also the exposure compensation, auto or manual focus and also the white balance. In fact you can also take pictures in RAW if you want a much more advanced post development with more information available. Unfortunately it is not able to scan QR codes directly from the main camera interface but it has a shortcut in the upper left corner so that you can scan QR codes in this tool. So it only requires one extra step, no big deal, but I would like it better if it was out of the box in the main camera interface. And regarding the documents, notice that if you have the artificial intelligence enabled, it's going to suggest you to access the scanner mode with which you can have an automatic cropping of these documents. But notice that also at the top it has some other options such as the automatic shutter so that simply by detecting the edges the camera takes the picture and it also has a color mode for you to choose how you want the scan to look. Whether you simply like a cropped photo or want it to look with an effect applied to enhance the details and look just like a dedicated scanner. In addition, it allows you to scan multiple sheets in the same document and when you are done you click this button to finally review the pictures you have taken. You can make necessary corrections, it even allows you to extract text or finally you can save it in a PDF format or you can also save it as separate images. So it's the best scanner I've seen on a cell phone. You would not need to buy another separate app for this action. This is a very strong point. The device has a high resolution mode with all available cameras so you can perfectly do some cropping to have a picture with a different framing while maintaining a good level of detail. I insist that this can be done with the three cameras and in all three cases we see a good level of detail although honestly it is not something ultra spectacular but you can get to rescue a good level of detail in this type of photographs. Remember that the sensor with the highest resolution is curiously the one used in the telephoto camera and in this case you do get to notice a higher level of detail than what we saw in the other cameras. So this does seem to me to be a much more spectacular camera in terms of level of detail specifically. In case you want to crop a picture the result will be very good. In motion pictures the ultra wide camera does a good job. Objects don't seem to come out blurry. The main camera also does a good job in this regard so there is nothing to complain about. However, if you use the zoom camera in this type of motion shots, notice how some objects might come out a bit blurry so it doesn't seem to be a specialist in this type of photography. Although Honor promises that through artificial intelligence you can get to capture the exact moment even applying a portrait effect as in this case. 
The result, I think, is acceptable. There are moments where it does get to make a capture at the exact moment, but the blur effect does not have so much level of accuracy due to all the movement which is very normal. But I must tell you that to achieve these results sometimes require many attempts, so personally I would not use artificial intelligence to capture these moments, but would prefer manual capture. For example, I took this picture manually to capture the exact moment and I think the result was quite good. Then there are moments where even the zoom camera can freeze time practically, but it does not always happen. The ultra wide camera outdoors will give us a good color, but there is too much distortion and chromatic aberration on some of the sides, so I feel that the camera should improve in these specific aspects if you want to completely raise the level and quality of their photographs. Obviously these are very specific elements that you might not notice in the picture unless you start zooming in and out to try to notice these kinds of details. The main camera from my point of view has a little more contrast in the pictures which more people may like. The result is nice, in this case we are not going to notice some distortions or chromatic aberration very evident in some areas of the photograph, so it seems to me that it is a camera that will have a good performance also offering us a good detail. And the zoom camera also has a good performance in these aspects, even in the edges you don't get to notice any imperfection, let's say, then the result is also positive with this camera. But speaking specifically of the maximum range that this device can offer us with respect to the zoom, you should know that it is 100x. However, if you are going to notice that from 10x, I would say that it is the zoom with the highest quality, because if you keep zooming in, the zoom will be too forced. This is a photograph at 30x and then 100x. But I insist that the zoom looks too forced, and in reality, it is not going to be enough to give us an exaggeratedly detailed photograph. However, from 2.5 to 10x, I think it will still be able to give us a picture with a good level of detail, but if you are looking for a device with a very powerful maximum zoom, I think that in this case it is not the device for you. Indoors, the three cameras maintain a good color rendition, which I like a lot, although again, it is seen that the ultra-wide camera has some distortions on the edges, and that is something that personally I have not liked so much, but focusing on the center of the photograph, we have a good quality with the main camera Obviously all areas of the photograph come out well with good detail, good color and virtually no noise and finally the zoom photography will also offer us a good level of detail. In this case we speak of optical zoom 2.5x, so it looks very good with good colors, good contrast. And again, a very good noise management, even with the 5x zoom, you still notice a good level of detail and it is a very good picture considering that there was less illumination. For backlit photos, I want to highlight as a positive point that the preview has been optimized so that it does not look burned and overexposed, unlike the vast majority of devices today. After taking the picture, it still improves it a little more. The handling of the shadows area possibly seems to me a little exaggerated, although in this case we are talking about a backlit picture quite complicated so I think the overall result is good notice how the highlights area comes out perfectly well. In this case there is a mesh present so it looks a little more squared the result but in the other area is perfectly well defined so I think that the backlit picture if it does it in a good way but with the main camera I noticed that with the ultra wide camera the preview is not of the same quality although the result is good balancing lights and shadows well although again the darkest area is perhaps a little more illuminated than it should be and with the zoom camera again the preview does not look well optimized but the result is good although the color became a little warmer and again the darkest area is perhaps a little overexposed but in general it is a photograph that will give us a good satisfaction in the final result. At night the cameras behave very well from the automatic mode, in fact there is not too much difference when you use the night mode in this type of environment, so I want to highlight as positive points that in the ultra wide camera we see a good exposure of the illuminated areas. And in the dark areas we see excellent noise management, so at night this camera stands out a lot with the main body again, there will not be much difference between using or not using the night mode, and the result is very similar but with a little higher quality due to the level of detail you can achieve with this camera and with the zoom camera again, there is no difference between night mode and automatic mode, and the result is exactly the same, i.e. handles very well the areas of strong lighting and the darker areas also handle them very well to avoid noise and maintain good color saturation. In fact, I love the level of detail that this camera achieves even at night. 
and even with the 5x zoom it maintains an excellent result and in the darker pictures where there is no light source present i think the result is very good with the ultra wide camera with the main camera the color rendering maybe becomes a little warmer than it should but fortunately it has an excellent level of detail and i insist that the auto mode is very good so there is no need to open the night mode manually because the result will be practically the same with the zoom camera the result still becomes warmer so I think it could improve in this aspect but the level of detail is exaggeratedly good considering that we are talking about a night photograph with the night mode again there will be no major difference and curiously if you zoom up to 5x it seems to me that you have a more accurate color rendition that is not so warm and you still have an excellent level of detail so in night photography applying zoom is possibly where the level rises because it has a very good aperture as a result of not having so much optical zoom and curiously in this photograph is the only one where you will see the difference between using or not using the night mode and curiously i like the result better without the night mode the device will also take very good macro pictures although with the main camera you can't get too close you can apply some digital zoom although it is still not a very uniform focus despite having variable aperture but it is not able to vary too much so it can't close its aperture enough to have a more uniform focus but remember that the ultra wide camera has autofocus so you can get pretty close and it will automatically switch to this camera to give a little better focus on such small objects so you can really get some good macro pictures although I don't consider it as a specialist in this by the way something I was forgetting to mention is that this device has different types of color interpretation depending on what you like this is the natural tone and I like that as a user they let you select what type of coloring you like the most the next is the vibrant color which as you realize doesn't have too much difference it's a very subtle difference but for some users it could be very useful and finally we have the authentic color which gives a little warmer tone so you as a user can choose your favorite color rendition in this case we selected the natural which comes as default for all the pictures we tested and if the ultra wide camera doesn't give you enough range or you don't like the distortion that is generated in some moments you could use the panoramic mode although i don't recommend it as much because it doesn't have a good dynamic range so it takes as a reference the starting point and if there are some more illuminated areas it is not able to lower the exposure i hope they correct this with some updates because definitely the panoramic mode doesn't look very good at this moment what is very good and we could even say that spectacular is the portrait photography really will give us very good quality detection of the foreground is good and what I like most is that it lets you take pictures from different focal lengths so you can have a much more professional perspective as a telephoto lens when taking this kind of pictures getting very demanding you will notice some areas where it does not detect very well or with 100% accuracy I insist that if you apply the 5x zoom in these portrait pictures the result will be super nice although again there are some areas where we would like more precision in the detection of the edges for an even more realistic picture but the result is definitely that it is good. Regarding video recording note that the maximum quality is 4K at 60 frames per second and you can do it with any of the rear cameras both the ultra wide and the main and telephoto so we have very good quality in that aspect although the front camera is limited to 30 frames per second when recording video note as if it allows us to switch between each of the lenses without any problem we can also take pictures while we are recording we can pause or resume our content although we cannot rotate to the front camera without before having our video recording so it can become a limiting something that is available is to turn on the flashlight is available is to turn on the flashlight without the need to first stop your video recording and even it is also available while using the ultra wide camera unlike the galaxy devices and another option is the noise reduction so you can enable or disable this option if you want to give a special emphasis to the voices but there is also available the movie mode where it will also suggest some color effects through artificial intelligence you also have the bokeh effect available in this section and we will also find a beauty mode although all the movie effects will be applied in hd because if you go up to 4k resolution but you want to apply some of this the resolution is automatically lowered but if you don't use any of these special effects note that even when recording in 4k at 30 frames per second there is available the log recording which is a much more more professional recording that you must colorize in.
post-production with some editing and more advanced knowledge or you can also record applying specific light to colorize with different effects all your videos then we will find some very nice features you can't add your own loots but it does bring some presets that can be attractive and finally you can also access the professional mode and switch to video so you can record using all the manual parameters that we saw a moment ago including changing the aperture and you can also activate the log mode or load some specific loot to record within this professional mode. The 4K video recording is nice, remember if you can do it with the ultra wide camera and that's a very good thing, although expected within this price range then you can perfectly well record the switch to the prime lens is a little bit noticeable in the color transition but it's still very nice, so there's no problem at all when switching between one and the other lens we still notice good color. A stable focus although the lighting could feel a little more variable depending on the area you are recording but remember you can also switch to the 2.5x optical zoom camera camera and you still have a good quality to start with it is a very positive thing that it lets you switch between the three lenses but it also maintains a very consistent color between all of them although again as we saw in the photograph the maximum zoom is where you can get to fall short the transition between the lenses is not so noticeable but the maximum zoom is just 10x so it gets to fall short compared to other devices fortunately maintains a good stabilization but i insist that it will not be so remarkable Indoors, the ultra-wide camera manages to handle noise very well, which is where we usually notice that it is a lower quality camera. In fact, if you notice that when you switch to the main camera, the noise is almost completely eliminated, but still the ultra-wide camera does a good job and the zoom camera also does a good job in this regard, although it loses a little contrast, but still a good video quality. I do not consider it the best in the category in this aspect, but it does an excellent job. In backlit conditions, we also see an excellent performance in video recording. Possibly this is one of of its strongest points because it manages to balance almost perfectly lights and shadows. There are some moments where you feel the change in lighting but it is quite subtle and really if you get to keep a very good quality even with the ultra wide camera still manages to maintain very well the quality slightly overexposed some areas when it detects face but nothing really serious and even applying zoom you will also notice that it makes a good balance of lights and shadows although the color gets distorted a little. The camera still manages to maintain very good quality slightly overexposed some areas when it detects the face but nothing really serious and even zooming in you will also notice that it makes a good balance of lights and shadows although the color becomes a little distorted and also the focus could struggle slightly but speaking specifically of the balance of lights and shadows the result seems very positive to me. At night the ultra wide camera as we saw indoors I think it manages to handle the noise well it does get to be slightly noticeable in very fast movements but where you get to notice much more that it is not a camera with as much light gathering capabilities is in the darker areas but still the noise handling I think is something very good when you switch to the main camera obviously there will be better lighting input but again you also notice good noise handling good level of detail so there is not much to complain about in this camera really when it zooms in. You're also going to notice that it does a good job of not balancing the highlights and shadows as well as we saw in photography so when there is no light source present that's when it manages to pick up more lighting to capture the darker areas well although note that there is some flickering present which was quite strange which i guess they could correct with an update this especially when you are in the darker areas and in the stabilization if we will find a good result with the ultra wide camera even when you go walking or running you achieve a result that if it looks stable with the main camera also looks considered considerably stable so you can go walking and capturing a good level of detail and you can even get to run although the movements are not disguised as much as the ultra wide camera but it is still a really very good stabilization with the zoom camera is where it starts to complicate the result a bit although still when walking is a good result but when running is obviously much more complicated this is completely normal. It also has a portrait video recording mode that will blur the background a bit. In this case, I think it does it with a good enough quality. Although in full HD plus resolution, when it stops detecting the face, it still maintains a good focus. Although when you move closer or farther away, it does not seem to change the intensity of the blur. And curiously, when the device, in fact, in my first test, it had not recorded any blur due to the device warming up. But in my second test, we had not been using the device as much and it still stopped blurring very soon. So the warming up seems to alter the performance of the camera a lot. It also has a fast motion mode which fortunately is in 4K and if it has stabilization it goes from 15x which can be useful for recording movements of people but it is also capable of reaching up to 1800x. 
So it stands out a lot in this aspect because it could also record the growth of some plants in a spectacular way. It also has two slow motion modes in full HD. The basic one is at 120 frames per second which gives you a good result but obviously the most spectacular will be going up to 240 frames per second but it is not a slow motion too outstanding because you are going to find it in most competitors. In fact, there are other devices capable of recording even a slower slow motion, so I must say that the video recording seems good to me, but it is still not completely good. There are some aspects where it could improve the focus. Fortunately, it is an aspect that it handles very well, as well as the backlit recording result, although there are some areas that still look slightly overexposed, but the video recording really comes to behave with a good level. The front camera notes that it has a good recording in terms of stability but definitely the color does not get to capture it with very good accuracy plus there are some areas that look overexposed then I think it will depend much on the environment in which you are recording the result but definitely gets to burn too much the illuminated areas unlike the rear camera that had a much better behavior in this regard. Fortunately if you have autofocus so you could zoom objects to show it to the audience and that's a positive thing. Indoors where we have much softer lighting that doesn't generate as much backlighting the result will be good in light handling but it doesn't have as much level of detail fortunately it still handles some good colors but it's definitely not a camera that's going to excel too much for video recording in fact at night i noticed a little more presence of noise and also less level of detail so it does not seem to me a very remarkable camera in these scenarios in fact at night stabilization will also feel a little stranger when walking with these vibrations and although the screen is able to light up to try to illuminate a face the result still has enough noise then I insist that it is not a camera. So remarkable in this curiously the device does not let you record fast motion with the front camera something that I consider as a weak point and also does not let you record slow motion with the front camera in general it seems to me a little limited fast camera with the front camera something that i consider as a weak point and also does not let you record slow motion with the front camera then the front camera in general seems to me a bit limited in fact you will not have the portrait effect with the front camera although fortunately it integrates the multi-video mode to record with the rear camera and the front camera at the same time the result is in full hd a little wider i 2520 by 1080 fortunately also has the zoom activated as well as the autofocus although it does not do the autofocus but it does not do it autofocus although it does not make the switch to the specialized zoom camera but well it is a mode that is good enough for the vast majority of people in fact it would also let you capture the result with two rear cameras although it seems that the focus becomes a little complicated in some of the cameras but overall i think the result if good for this type of recording even without stopping your video recording you can change the distribution of your cameras to place the front camera or the rear cameras then it is very good in this type of recording in fact, if you hold down one of the buttons, you can activate a kind of fast motion mode while you are recording and when you release it, it will keep the same speed as before so it can be useful for some scenarios and record special videos without the need to edit later your content, although I think most people will prefer a later edit but the tools are present here and it is something I had not seen in other devices. The device comes with Android 14 and Magic OS 8.0, so it has the latest in both Android and Honor, and also the manufacturer promises 4 years of software updates and 5 years of security patches, which is not the highest on the market, but I think it is very good policy to have for long enough your device, honestly, I think a high-end device, I doubt anyone will keep it for more than 5 years, usually whoever buys a high-end device is likely to change it constantly, so it may prove to be enough for a lot of people let me tell you five years generally who buys a high-end device is likely to change it constantly so the policy may be enough for a lot of people let me tell you some features that come in this honor system because for starters we will find a new version of the always on display feature that now emulates what the iphone does the most recent one is that it is able to show you the wallpaper dimmed so you don't just see the screen completely black so it can be a change that some people find useful, although you could also activate the partial display which as you realize simply encloses in a small circle your wallpaper so you can have different styles. 
Although in this case you need to choose the specific cover or you can select your own image or photograph to appear in that section whereas in full screen mode notice how there is no way for you to choose your specific photograph so to change that you need to go into the wallpaper section to change the lock screen. And while we're on the subject of the lock screen note that it has a feature called magic lock screen that allows you to select from four different patterns and once you choose one of them you can change the image to choose any other that you prefer and then it will apply the same effect effect note that you can pinch to crop or place differently your image you can also click on the clock to change the style and color so you can customize your lock screen quite well it also allows you to select over here the color of your activated screen then when applying these changes note how the always on display mode is also going to be in conjunction with the lock screen plus the transition is very good so these are possibly the most important points to note about the lock screen Select over here the color of your activated screen. Then when you apply these changes, notice how the always on display mode is also going to be in conjunction with the lock screen. Plus the transition is very good. So these are possibly one of the strongest points of this device. The level that you reach in the customization of the lock screen and the always on display mode which seems very similar to the iPhone. And another thing that is very similar to the iPhone is the new standby mode. Notice that when we connect to charge our cell phone, we can just turn off the screen and and we can just turn it off and we can just turn it on. We can simply turn off the screen and leave it in landscape mode and see how it gives you the percentage of charge in the corner and on the screen it will show you a clock and a calendar or we can also change styles as it happens in the iPhone so in fact this reminds me a lot to the iPhone with different styles and you have to access to give permission of the weather for everything to work correctly in this sense it does not remind the iPhone because the iPhone almost never has this kind of details of system applications that are asking you again for permissions but basically that could be the same as the iPhone but basically that could be the operation of the standby screen then shows you the weather or different types of clock although you can also select the type of pictures you want to be appearing if you want automatic images or want to specifically choose your own photos to appear there and also has a kind of artistic signature that you can also select and customize with the text you want to look your screen while it is loading and speaking of images, you can select an option called change covers that will give you several suggestions of images on the lock screen. Personally, it's something I hate, so fortunately you can disable Honor, also integrate some artificial intelligence functions within its assistant. For example, we will find the magic text function, so within your gallery, if you have a photograph or capture that contains text, will appear this button through which you will be able to select the text that is in the image, so you can copy or do whatever you want with it. In fact, you do not even need to press that button, just... Hold down on the text and slide to be able to make this selection, then it can be useful to extract text in digital format and in fact you do not even need to press that button, just simply hold down on the text and slide to be able to do this selection. In fact you do not even need to press that button, just simply hold down on the text and slide to make this selection, then it can be useful to extract text in digital format and in fact that text can also drag it to another application in case you have the view of dual applications, simply simply select the text you want and then you can drag it in this way, then it can also be a bit productive. But speaking of productivity, there is also something called Magic Portal, which is a shortcut bar to applications that you can drag content to. For example, if you want to upload an image to Instagram, instead of having to find the Instagram application and then open it and then hit the add button and find your image, you can make things much easier. Notice how you can simply hold down on an image and then drag it directly to Instagram. In this case, I want to make a post on my feed, so it will immediately open Instagram and it will open the new post tool selecting this picture that I wanted so it is a tool that can save you several steps in fact the same thing you can do with a video you can simply drag it either to Instagram TikTok WhatsApp Facebook even YouTube so several apps are compatible with these types of tools that you can use to boost your productivity and by the way another useful tool of the magic portal would be to search for images on the internet so what you have to do is take a screenshot and watch how you can edit it to try to crop it in a very specific way and then you hold down and you're going to drag it back into the magic portal and there's a google image search option so it could also be useful for doing image search specifically in fact honor promotes a lot that for example you could hold down and you can drag it also to google maps and see how it will immediately search for that address and it will show you the direction so it can help you in this kind 
of things although i feel it could still be improved because for example if you get a message with an event it is not possible to drag it to the calendar for example to quickly add an event so i think it could still be improved but the idea is pretty good another tool that honor is offering recently is to save the event to the calendar and then you can drag it back to google maps and it will show you the directions to get there that Honor is offering recently is to save in a kind of clipboard images or text just slide three fingers down and see how it will be saved in the favorites space although curiously the animation directs the images down but in reality the favorites space is at the top so I think the animation could improve but this clipboard you can enjoy it in all parts of your phone so that later if you are editing some text in your blog I would like this to be configured from the factory without the user having to be authorizing things but to configure for the first First time this bookmark space you have to enable many permissions so it may be slightly complex for users who do not have much experience but if you have experience it is a matter of enabling each permission that asks you to have an optimal performance i would like this to come configured from factory without the user having to be authorizing things but this bookmark space allows you to store images text or web pages in fact with web pages Something funny happens because simply when you are on a web page you can again slide three fingers down and see how immediately you will save the web page but in addition to being in the clipboard you will be able to see it in your blog notes so you are practically saving the pages for later reading without internet connection so I think it is as something very useful too. Now see how you can interact with your device without the need to have your hands on the screen. It can be useful if you have wet or stained hands, just direct your hand and see how you can easily scroll in TikTok or any other application that supports scrolling. You could also take screenshots by closing your fist and you could also go backwards by simply doing this gesture then it can definitely give you useful options for navigating your system. And something I like about this device is that it has different smart sensing features. The one I like the most is the smart rotation one because notice how I don't need to rotate the device to rotate the screen but just by rotating my head I notice how the screen is going to rotate. This can be quite useful when you are lying down but you want to still maintain a display according to your eyes alignment. Fortunately the one handed use mode if going to work properly resizing both on horizontal and vertical axis although you can't change the size of this one. You want to still maintain a display according to your eye alignment. Fortunately, the one-handed use mode if going to work properly resizing on both the horizontal and vertical axis, although you can't resize this small screen or reposition it, but I think it is small enough for most use. Comfortable inside the gallery, there is also a tab to create. In this case, you can create instant movies with an automatic editing. Just select several video clips that you want to edit and automatically the device will try to detect the highlights and apply a template with animated effects and different sound styles for automatic editing of your videos. See how this is the result and I insist that not only edits it in that it cuts the content but could also apply some special templates then it can be useful if you want to create quick content without having to use use it. Useful if you want to create quick content without being very detailed in the things you want to apply also includes a video editor in this part that is completely free without the need to pay any subscription or something like that and note that it has several tools for a quick and comfortable editing and I repeat without watermarks or special payments in fact you can also create a collage or press the create story button to have some templates that you can fill in later and automatically you will make this kind of special animation simply you have to fill with videos of the required length needed. Then it includes several tools to create content. Also remember that the device also incorporates a special dock that is enabled with this gesture on the screen from which you can open apps in floating mode. But the bad news is that you can only open one app at a time, so it is not so versatile in this sense. Fortunately, if you can open YouTube in this format and you can also open Instagram, then the compatibility is good, but the bad news is that it can only be one app at a time, which takes away a lot of versatility and as a legacy of Huawei they keep the knuckle gestures to double tap the screen and take a screenshot or draw directly with the knuckle to select something specific which in a way emulates the circle to search function of the galaxy because you could perfectly draw a circle with the knuckle and then drag it to Google image search so it's just a little tip and if you do the two knuckle tap gesture you can start recording your screen which by the way is still a lower resolution than HD so the resolution of the screen recordings is lousy. 
has some other gestures to interact with the cell phone, but another interesting feature is the privacy of calls by artificial intelligence. If it detects that you start to lower the volume on a call, will realize that you do not want those around you hear that call. So it will optimize the sound so that only you will be able to hear this option. You can leave it enabled all the time or let it be enabled automatically. And last but not least, we have the smart control function, which is a remote control for the cell phone to be used as a universal remote control. Simply choose the brand of the different devices, follow a small tutorial and ready your cell phone will serve as a universal remote control. So you will have all the buttons available here. This is the first time that Honor starts to differentiate itself a little more from Huawei at the software level, integrating new features like the Magic Portal, although it still reminds a lot of Huawei, so whoever is fond of Huawei will probably also be fond of this Honor system. The optical engine is on the x-axis and if used in some areas of the system to try to give you an optical feedback, although not in all parts of the system, so in that aspect it could still improve to give a little more premium feeling. Let's talk about security and tell you that this device has a fingerprint reader inside the screen that will work in a good way is not as fast as readers outside the screen that only just put and remove your finger. But if you will have a recognition fast enough to not be something uncomfortable, also supports up to five records and also remember that it has facial recognition. This facial recognition, unlike many other devices, if it is in three dimensions, therefore, if we will offer a good level of security notes as at the time of registration, we'll ask you to turn your face to different angles to capture your face with much greater accuracy. So it is a secure method. Therefore, it is a safe method of recognition. It is therefore a secure method of unlocking is one of the few cell phones that has both methods, both facial recognition and a fingerprint reader can set an alternative look if necessary. And you can also enable the option to require eye contact to not unlock so easily with respect to the fingerprint reader. It is also worth noting that you can change its unlock animation so that you can choose your favorite one. It also has the smart unlock so that you are not constantly looking at the lock screen, but you can register trusted places or trusted devices. And in these environments, the device will stay unlocked. Note that some sections of the system are customized by honor, but there are other sections that look like pure Android, which gives a rather strange feeling, especially because if you enter a new section, the honor customization reappears. So it gives a feeling of of inconsistency and of an operating system that is not yet perfectly polished. Honor offers other options such as parallel space that would allow you to have a kind of two phones in one. Remember that Honor integrates a specific security chip to prevent any kind of attack that tries to steal your information. Then it is very important that an Honor offers a good level of security in this cell also offers us safe to store there all kinds of files protected by our fingerprint and also has application lock to choose which applications you want to return to request your fingerprint or some code before you can open them. In fact, it also integrates a password manager section in which you can choose if you want the password manager to be the one of honor or you want it to be the Google one. This is something very positive because it leaves you as a user to select your favorite service. This password manager allows you to automatically fill in the information inside some forms, although the cloud synchronization is disabled, but you can turn it on. This from my point of view should come on but manually you have to enter it. Once it is synchronized your passwords, you can fill in these fields, obviously verifying through the face or through the fingerprint and ready. It should be noted that it does not have a child mode. So that would be missing to finish complementing well, but it does have a private space where you can make your device, have your own applications and files. And to access this private space, just make a gesture on the main screen. You can set a different password to your main screen to access this private space and see how in this private space you have your own applications. In fact, you can add other applications that you have in your main space and see how being on the main screen, you can and make this gesture as if you use zoom in and see how you automatically transition to the parallel space here. You have your own applications and your own files, all password protected. Then it is a kind of secure folder that has applications and files. And obviously to exit, you can press that button. And with that form, if someone wants to re-enter, must first verify by face or by fingerprint. Honor does not have a VPN to protect your Wi-Fi connections on public networks, but if you have a collaboration with TrustLock for antivirus, you have to enter the system 
system manager, if you want to enter to do a scan to try to avoid any malware, also has the function of twin application, so you can clone applications and use two instances of it on the same phone. If you get to lose your phone, you depend entirely on Google Honor for the moment, does not have its own implementation to try to find it, so you must enter Google, then find my device, and this function already comes on. Within the digital wellness section, you will be able to see the time consumption you have had in different applications, set limits and parental controls on your children's devices. And finally, you also have the emergency and security options to fill in your necessary information. And by pressing the power button five times, you can initiate an emergency call. The battery is 5,600 milliamps and definitely that is a tremendous battery that in conjunction with excellent power management that has honor, has achieved impressive figures having our battery drainer running in the foreground could easily exceed 5 hours, something that very few devices are able to achieve so the battery is completely remarkable and even having the YouTube player in the foreground and the drainer in the background was close to reaching 11 hours of playback so it is a completely good battery possibly of its strong strongest points and a point on which it could outperform several manufacturers. In fact, the battery also supports very extreme weather conditions. So if it is very cold or very hot, the device will still continue to work well. So the battery can be a strong point, also includes a normal saving mode for everyday use, or also includes an ultra power saving mode, something that was not so common in Honor, but we have finally seen it available. Also allows you to add some applications that you consider necessary and useful. Although this mode, I see it more focused on emergencies because it has restricted many system options but it is always useful to have something for those occasions where you are running out of battery and do not have quick access to your charger. But speaking of that, if you run out of power, the included charger is 100 watts, although curiously the device supports 80 watts load. In fact, the battery is different depending on other regions, so there are countries where the capacity may vary, but using this original charger included in the box with 15 minutes of charge recovered 32% of energy in half an hour, reached 64% and full charge finished it in 50 minutes. It, so it does not sound like such a fast charge but consider that the battery is quite large so I think if you can get to give you excellent autonomy experience. To give you an excellent experience of autonomy and charging power simultaneously also supports wireless charging up to 66 watts, also has reverse wireless charging so you could put to charge an accessory or other cell phone that supports wireless charging on the back of this cell phone and finally to protect your battery notes that has the mechanism of intelligent charging and intelligent battery capacity but has no charging lock so it does not have many options but I think what it brings is enough this in order that the battery does not degrade as quickly or over the years. In connectivity practically has everything we could ask for. We will find support for networks without taking also including an option for you to manage what applications can access the internet through your mobile data and what applications can only do through Wi-Fi. This can be useful to regulate your mobile data consumption. Also also supports the connection of and SIM. You can use the second SIM card tray or you can add this and SIM, which can be very useful when traveling as simply scanning a QR code can add a plan data without the need to purchase a physical SIM card. So it is very convenient also Honor integrates a special chip radio frequencies to have a better management of the antennas therefore rest assured that you will have an excellent connection also supports Wi-Fi networks and 7 so it is ready to take advantage of the future as currently the most you will find in routers is Wi-Fi 6 in this case I have a Wi-Fi router 6 and believe me it is giving a very high download speed so all your downloads will be with very good speed it also includes Bluetooth 5.3 to have good stability with your accessories and also supports NFC to set up mobile payments or link to other accessories or devices. You can use Google Wallet or banking applications compatible with mobile payments to work on your cell phone. Does not integrate FM radio, but that was something expected in all high-end devices. Fortunately, if it also supports wireless projection of your screen both in mirror format and in a desktop format, then you could open applications in Windows format while projecting your cell phone. And if you connect a keyboard and... A mouse wirelessly you could raise your productivity quite a lot. Applications in Windows format while projecting your cell phone. And if you connect a keyboard and a mouse wirelessly you could raise your productivity quite a bit. In fact not only can project wirelessly but also through cable in case you want more quality or more stability in your screen projection. And you can also use the desktop mode functions. This should be noted because few devices today offer this type of advanced features to use your cell phone in a computer format.
Obviously, it will have Android Auto wired and wireless. And with respect to the sensors, there is good news because there is no major absence. We will have accelerometer, geomagnetic field sensor and orientation, also gyroscope, a light sensor and even pressure sensor. And the proximity sensor is completely physical. Therefore, it will give us a very accurate response. Unlike many other manufacturers who are betting on virtual proximity sensors, then we have an excellent performance. Also has gravity sensor and linear acceleration in addition to the rotation vector. Honor ecosystem is one of the most complete today because it has a good catalog of magic books that are their laptops with which you can interact quite well, have multi-screen collaboration, have Honor share to share files quickly between devices of the same brand. So not only have a good catalog of laptops, but also wearables finding various Honor band Honor watch. We will also find headphones and tablets of different types of style. So besides having a good catalog of products, also integrate a good interaction between them thanks to different technologies. For example, have Honor Connect so you can also connect your calls and some other things immediately detects the devices you have near you to interact between them. In fact, observe how through the magic ring we are going to be able to connect between different devices by simply selecting them on this ring so you could share your screen and do some other things between all your devices. It is definitely a very good ecosystem that is also part of the Android ecosystem. So you have quick share to share files between various devices or with laptops of other brands or you also have Google Fast pair so that accessories even from other manufacturers that are not from Honor can be detected directly on your cell phone simply by opening them or pressing the pairing button detection could get to have some drawbacks. In this case, I do not get to detect these headphones that do have Google Fast Pair, but definitely the best experience will be when you connect headphones Honor. However, in other sections such as cloud storage or control of home devices still depends on Google, so it does not feel like such a strong brand. In that sense, you are going to rely on Google Drive storage or Google Photos and you are going to use Google Home to control the house. So in this sense, it could still improve. In fact, it should be noted that Google Home does not come installed, but you can install it perfectly. But Honor does not have a home application with which you can quickly control your devices. Let's move on to talk about performance comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So it is the latest processor today in the Android world. Also accompany it 12 gigabytes of RAM and has another 8 gigabytes of Honor Turbo RAM, which is the virtual RAM that we have tested on several locations and has left us with a good feeling. As you see, it took about two seconds to open each application. Having an excellent behavior is very agile, very fast, even within applications. Also going to multimedia, you will not see that the device is frozen and I insist that thanks to having very good RAM and additional to the virtual RAM definitely I think this device will not have any problems for your applications to work as best as possible observe how I have desk and six applications open and none has restarted you will not have any problem in that sense in fact you could also swap between different applications by making a gesture at the bottom and observe how the exchange is super fluid super fast and without any problems so definitely the RAM memory can be one of its strongest points in conjunction with the turbo RAM also has 500 gigabytes of storage so you have plenty of space although it does not support micro SD but in the high end is unusual for a device to have this support so 512 gigabytes I think are enough to have many videos many games many images without the device gets to fill plus it is a fairly fast storage so finally let's test the three elements processor RAM and storage we will put to export a video with a total duration of one minute with four clips recorded with this cell phone to see how long it takes in this task ready to seven seconds nothing more is a very fast device fully recommended even to edit video directly in 4k in this cell phone Finally, let's talk about the games. But first I want to tell you that there is the maximum performance mode within the battery settings in case you want to enable maximum power for this cell phone. And also you will notice that it has a game manager but is a little hidden. The truth that is very strange because you must enter the applications and then game manager to finally add the games. You want to have the add-ons enabled notes that also has an interesting feature to keep your games updated is a function that I had not seen so far. 
Then when you enter a game, notice how there are options that are disabled in order to maintain a much smoother experience. And in this part, we will be able to enter this special panel where you can change the power mode between a balanced mode or a game mode. You also have the brightness selector. You can enable the do not disturb mode. You can also disable some gestures that might interrupt you. And you have a choice of different color filters to apply in your game, depending on the style you are going to run. You can also take screenshots and screen recordings, but remember that the recordings will be in lower. Resolution than HD, which is totally disappointing in case you want to record gameplay. You can also take screenshots and screen recordings, but remember that the recordings will be in a lower resolution than HD, which is totally disappointing in case you want to record gameplays. Finally, note that you can also open applications in a floating mode to answer messages without the need to close your game, and those are the tools we have available in this section. In Call of Duty, this device defaults to very high quality at maximum rate. However, maximum graphics quality is also available and ultra frames per second rate is also available, although selecting the quality drops to a medium level. So you as the user must select whether you want to give priority to graphics quality or priority to frames per second with maximum graphics quality. Also note that all effects are available simultaneously, including the experimental functions of super resolution and the like if you give priority to frames per second rate, the graphics quality drops and some effects are naturally disabled. First we tested Call of Duty giving priority to the graphic quality and it gave us a perfect experience, very good stability, very good graphics, very good effects. The truth is that it is one of the best devices to play despite not being a device 100% aimed at gaming and I say this because there are other devices of the high end that perhaps are focused more on photography or other things and gaming can suddenly have some instability but in this case the stability is very good and the temperature reached 40.3 degrees Celsius in this case. I say this because there are other high end devices that perhaps focus more on photography or other things and gaming can suddenly have a little instability but in this case the stability is very good and the temperature reached 40.3 degrees celsius in this first test and i mention it because it was a pretty hot day and yet the device came to have a very good performance testing it at the ultra rate it did reach 90 frames per second and to show you how well it did in this test its lowest peak was 86 frames per second so it really performed very well and again the temperature didn't get too high even on a hot day so if you play in even cooler environments you're going to have an even better experience in the Legends game, we changed the automatic setting for a manual setting in Ultra at 60 frames per second. Although you know that this game sometimes does strange things. Interestingly, this device did not try to climb beyond 60 frames per second as we have seen in other cell phones, so it maintained much greater stability. Although it did have some moments of low peaks that can become normal in this game, so again came to have a very good stability, very good graphics quality confirming that it is an excellent device to play and again did not come to report a temperature so high. In the Spongebob game by default, it gives us the high resolution and also the high quality. But for the test, we went up to Epic in both parameters, keeping 60 frames per second and the smoothing activated. This game, curiously, if it came to complicate in some aspects, although it is not a very bad experience, but if it had a little more noticeable drops, should also consider that the screen recording in this case is in low resolution, so it is not such a heavy load on the processor when you're playing and recording screen, but evidently it can be a little simple recording for those looking to create gaming content. Possibly the device will give priority to maintain a low temperature, because compared to the screen recording in this case is in low resolution, so it is not a heavy load on the processor when you're playing and recording screen, but evidently it can be a little simple recording for those looking to to create gaming content, possibly the device will give priority to keep a low temperature because compared to other devices this one was very cool running this game, but I insist that it had some low peaks which are not really that noticeable but it didn't have that much stability. And finally we played Genshin Impact by default, it selects medium graphics quality but we turned it up to very high to put a test according to the price, we also turned it up to 60 frames per second. And the blurring we also turned it up to very high. And the result is simply wonderful, we could say that the performance of this device is at the same level as devices focused 100% to gaming with a virtually perfect stability. Also what is most striking is that it maintains a considerably low temperature considering that we played on a hot day and did not even come close to some of the highest which is what other devices generally exceed in this content so even maintaining a very good stability is cool and definitely complemented with the good screen, good sound and good everything is a highly recommended device for those who like gaming without sacrificing other sections.
In conclusion, the Honor Magic 6 Pro seems to me one of the most attractive devices today in terms of design, also has a competitive photographic system, although the maximum zoom can get to be very short compared to other devices in the range. In fact, the front camera also seems to me that could and should also improve. I find it very curious that in games does not get to heat up much, but if you're taking pictures outdoors can get to be very hot. Taking pictures outdoors it can get hot and its performance drops considerably in photography. The battery is the best I've seen recently so while it is an excellent device still has some points of improvement that hopefully they consider for the next generation. For the moment this has been all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did you know you can indicate it and see you next time.